Hello, welcome back to the series of A Spy Sessions. So today we are going to discuss about system architecture design that is SIS3 uh, from Array Spice. So I am Thota Krishna Hema, your A Spice expert. So let us look into the details of system architecture design. The purpose of system architecture design process is to establish system architecture design and to identify which system requirements are to be allocated to which elements of the system and to evaluate the system architecture design against a defined criteria. So what is a system architecture design? System architecture design is a high level design. So where we have uh, everything in place so uh, we have to we have to uh, represent each and every element of the system requirement and system requirement specification and we have to represent in terms of design uh, so what is the uh, what is the benefit out of it so if we represent in a pictorial format or the flowchart format or or this kind of you know in design format uh, so what is the use for us so we can uh, define the system elements and we can uh, uh, we can get we can uh, we can uh, we can allocate the system requirements to the particular elements and even uh, we can define we can we can have a defined criteria for that like whether it is fulfilled or not so we can say like yeah this is done this is done because uh, we have we fulfilled this particular we, this particular criteria kind of so a system architecture design is defined that define that identifies the elements of the system so uh, as i said before we have we can identify the elements of the system and we have to allocate the system requirements to the elements of the system and uh, we have to define the uh, we we have to define the interfaces to the system elements so we have we have already interface uh, requirements requirement specification document so that is the in that is called uh, that is the interfaces for the uh, for the system requirements so here uh, the interfaces are we are talking about is in between the system elements how the system element will communicate with other system element so this one this how the system uh, so the, how the particular system in system element will interact with the other element so we have to define all the system uh, interfaces of the system elements and we have to and then the dynamic dynamic behavior of the system elements are defined is uh, is defined and consistency and bidirectional traceability are established between system requirements system architecture design and the system architecture design is agreed and communicated to all affected parties so so it's like let us talk about the base practices so let us get in the details of it so i read it purposely because we can go through in details in base, base practices so bp1 talks about develop system requirement design so sorry, system architecture design so what is the system architecture design so whether it is a web document or excel document or any other uh, tool so what are the components it have so we will have a certain tools like you know where we can uh, document system architecture design inside it or else like you know we can fetch the data in terms of in terms of pdf or we can even document the system architecture design in uh, in word file or even an excel so based on your organizational template format so develop a software system requirement design so it will have the non functional and non functional re system requirements addressed in this so we will have a system element uh, we have a defined uh, defined element so this is but the, this is this is the element here this is element b this is element c kind of so wherein like we have to map the functional and non functional requirements which we had defined in the system requirement specification so uh, as i said like the architecture design is the high level design so we will have a hierarchy of the of hierarchy of uh, the levels hierarchy levels which involved in that okay and bp2 talks about allocate system requirements so we have a set of system elements right so which is represented in a flow chart slow flow chart at the hierarchical hierarchical representation so now we have to allocate system requirements to the so system elements bp3 talks about define interfaces of the system elements so we have already we already have a interface system requirement uh, requirement document interface system requirement specification document similarly we we have to define the interfaces in between the system elements as well so we first of all we have to identify it and then develop it and document it in a document in uh, in this particular architecture design itself and bp4 talks about describe dynamic behavior the dynamic behavior of this 
of this architecture design we have to we have to evaluate because uh, see how will how will the interaction between the system elements we have to define in a dynamic dynamic uh, uh, environment or dynamic behavior so uh, as i said uh, so i i gave my multiple examples uh, in in system software architecture design the same way like how uh, how it will behave in the ignition cycle how the system will how the system will def, uh, will behave when we shut down how in how many uh, seconds it will get shut down or how many uh, seconds it will require uh, to to boot up or you know uh, how it will operate in the normal mode how about the calibration so uh, at uh, at what frequency it requires a calibration or the diagnosis this all we have to evaluate and we have to get the details of the dynamic behavior uh, of this of this particular system element so bp5 talks about evaluate alternate system architecture so this is uh, this is about the evaluation criteria for the architecture uh, so it is about uh, according to the means like according to defined criteria we have to uh, see every time we will so bp4 talks about uh, dynamic behavior right so if the uh, how the interaction between uh, the system elements we have we will get it so based on the dynamic behavior based on the interfaces based, uh, based on the system requirements or the functional requirements non functional requirements uh, so we have to come up with multiple alternatives so one architecture one, one architecture design won't be there in so if you look at this particular work so even the one dynamic behavior so one one particular element is defined is uh, is acting in multiple uh, mul multiple ways multiple ways in the particular in, in the particular environment four five ways then we will have four five ways of alternative design because you know if we consider everything in uh, everything uh, in uh, in place like we will have we, as an outcome we will have one architecture design so if we understand uh, it in one way then the, we will get another another architecture design so this all we will generally we will sit in a in a room and we will brainstorm on this on this uh, uh, getting a perfect uh, fit in perfect fit in system architecture uh, so we will do a brainstorming session and we will come up with the best fit system architecture so uh, bp5 talks about uh, evaluate alternate system architectures so define evaluation criteria for this like each and every parameter we will have a set of parameters so uh, we will define uh, our 10 to 15 parameters or more than that also like you know based on the based on the previous experience and even uh, based on uh, the uh, customer needs and expectations also like we will have a uh, defined set of parameters and uh, we have uh, the evaluation criteria which is there in the means like we will develop a matrix out of it uh, so which is called plug matrix or so the decision analysis and resolution in terms of cmmi uh, so we will get uh, we will give uh, a particular score to the particular parameters and uh, whatever the parameter which gives a more maximum or uh, maximum score then we will take that as an input now as as a perfect fit so uh, this this see some of the examples of the um, of these parameters is given is given below like modularity maintainability expandability scalability reliability security realization and usability all these things they have defined here means like we will have a similar set of parameters defined and defined in that particular matrix and we have to give a score based on the brainstorming session which you do with the other peer architects or the managers or the engineering head who have a entire uh, you know system view so he will evaluate a, a group of people will evaluate the best fit system architecture okay bb6 talks about directional traceability bidirectional traceability for this system architecture design we have to ensure system requirement specification to system architecture design traceability srs to sad system architecture design okay system requirement specification to system architecture design is one traceability and the other traceability is system architecture design to system system uh, low system design system low level design or uh, you know um, or we have to uh, we have to ensure the bidirectional traceability because it should it should uh, support your entire coverage consistency and even impact analysis of it so bp7 talks about ensure consistency ensure consistency is uh, is about like uh, every time i say uh, when you ensure on bidirectional traceability activity and we and and when you ensure the review activities 
uh, then we will have a consistency in place ppa talks about communication so communication will happen either in email or the minutes of meeting or even uh, so even your uh, uh, your configuration management auto generated tools so uh, so the uh, okay let me come back to the barriers and traceability uh, aspect again like uh, a system architecture design should have a uh, traceability which is linked i said system low level design right so low level design will not be there sorry for that and uh, so system require system requirements to system architecture design is one traceability system architecture design to system integration integration testing is other traceability and system architecture design to software requirement specification is other traceability three traceabilities we have to ensure on one is system requirement specification to system architecture design the previous phase to this phase and the next phase is system architecture design to software requirement specification second phase and we have a parallel or the v model activity which carries or based on system architecture we will define system interface sorry system integration testing right so because of that system architecture to architecture design to system in uh, system integration test specification also we have to ensure traceability so what are the outcomes of it is system requirement design sorry system architecture design our communication record review record traceability record in interface requirement specification so all these documents are the outcome of it so thank you for listening this particular tutorial if you like this tutorial subscribe to my channel for more videos on automotive